here at the MCM London Comic Con. What do you make of the event so far, and why do you come to cons? What do you get out of the experience? I love coming to cons because there's just so much excitement. Like, you come, you know, you, you, for what I do, voiceovers, I'm in, I'm isolated in a booth behind glass. <laughs> it's kind of like being in an insane asylum, <laughs> like, you know, padded walls, and like, you don't really get to interact with that many people. But um, when you come to the cons, you get to see who you actually are doing this for, and you get to connect with the people who watch the show and who are getting something from it. So it's just, it's always a great experience. Yeah. Um, I guess, um, obviously talking about voice acting, um, you've been lucky enough to provide the voice of some pretty fantastic characters. Um, can you maybe walk us through, for you, some of your favorites and the ones that people most often ask you to give them when you get to meet them at events like this? Oh yeah. Um, so, I guess one of my most exciting ones in the beginning of my career was uh, Melina from The Emperor's New School. I think, did you guys have that here? Yeah? Okay, cool. Disney Channel. Um, that was a good one because it came from like a classic, you know, from a, a Disney feature. And then I was the first, I was like the only new character um, who was introduced to that, that world. Um, Melina, I played Melina. Um, so that was really exciting because that was my first like major Disney show. Um, and then, you know, obviously now like Adventure Time is such a huge show. So playing Flame Princess is, has been amazing and just so exciting. And um, it just strikes a chord with so many people. So, um, so that character is, uh, has a special place in my heart. And um, let's see, oh, Giffany on, um, on Gravity Falls. That was just like a, a guest star, but um, for some reason, people always um, ask me to do that one, and it's, it's she's just such a crazy like dating sim. Um, she's like, "You're my boyfriend now, Suze. Ha 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 ha." <laughs> that one's so much fun to do because she's psycho. I guess that's kind of a trend, isn't it? <laughs> Between like Flame Princess, like they always have these crazy tempers. Um, and then you know, I, do, I also do some other types of shows like. Um, this Disney Junior show called uh, Sheriff Callie's Wild West. I think that plays in the UK, um, but it's I played like this little cactus named Toby, and kids really respond to him, like the younger ones. Um, but he's a little pokey cowpoke, and he sounds like this. <laughs> My name is Toby, and uh, so that one's really fun to do. And um, yeah, I mean, there's so many. I, I love all the characters that they do. There's more, but I won't bore you. <laughs> Lumina is a good one too, for Final Fantasy. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark from Airlim. Um, I, I just remember you did um, the character from uh, Luna. Uh, how did you go from like? Was it an easy transition? Or was it very similar from doing, like, say, Flame Princess um, to say uh, like from going to Final Fantasy? Yeah, there's definitely obviously like a a switch in the tone, and I think just going from original animation. Um, to video games, there's such different acting styles. Um, you know, it's it, video games are very like real and um, kind of they, they like they're played a little flat, which I really like. It's a different type of challenge. I mean, of course, Lumina, her character, that character was like not as um, flat as like Lightning, say. Um, but but it, but it's it's really fun to have the you know as a, as an actress to have that challenge to go from something like Flame Princess and Adventure Time and that kind of like actually that world is very natural also but it's still like slightly heightened so to go from that to like the Final Fantasy world it's just it's fun you get to see all these different perspectives as an actress so um, yeah it's it's great to go between the two. So one last, like, welcome until the next question. Um, how, how did you get into the process of being a voiceover actress? Um, so I started acting on camera when I was younger. I got picked to be in this show when I was a kid. And um, it just eventually turned into animation. But uh, the one thing that really stands out is um, I was in New York. I grew up in New York, and I auditioned for uh, to play the, the role of this four-year-old bear in Dumbo Part Two. And the casting directors were in Los Angeles, so I did the audition. You know, we sent them like an MP3, 
and um, I got a call back for it, and they haven't they hadn't seen me. So when I went in for the call back, and you know, again, this was remote, so it was a phone patch. Um, I started. I was like, "Hi, this is Jessica," and um, and the casting director seemed so embarrassed. He was like, "Oh, I, I'm I'm so sorry. I, I think I think we got the wrong Jessica." I'm like, "No, nope, that was that was me." i <laughs> and I I had actually tricked Disney casting to thinking that I was actually a four year old. So after that audition, he was like, "Look, you know, he's like, you should definitely move to LA after, you know." you're done in New York, <laughs> which I did. And then it kind of, it took like a year and then I started, you know, because animation really lives in Los Angeles. That's where it's made and that's just, you can't be um, like a working animation actor without living in Los Angeles. So um, that's when it really happened for me and it took off after I moved there. It took about a year and then I booked like five pilots and I was on a bunch of shows. I'm like, okay, I guess this is what I'm meant to do. <laughs> so. Um, hi, I'm Alice from Audio Boom. Hi. Um, so what do you love about voice acting in comparison to doing live action stuff? Um, voice acting is so amazing because you get to be so many different types of characters. I mean, I play a cactus. <laughs> I play like a fire princess who flies and like destroys things. And there's just such a huge diversity and range of characters that I'm able to play as a voice actress and and different ages and different genders I mean you know it's just it's just so much fun and you get to be as creative as you possibly can so that's very fulfilling for me as an actress hi there oh, hi, um, hi. my question to you is um, what's your what has been your biggest highlight and what do you plan to do next in your career well, um, I guess like as, as an actress, you don't really have too much control because, you know, part of my job, a big part of my job is auditioning every day. So I never know what parts are, you know, going, I'm going to be auditioning for. So really it's kind of an exciting lifestyle because you never know what's going to happen. Like your next big role could be tomorrow, you know, and since I've been here in London, I've had to you know, record auditions while I've been here on my travel mic. And, um, yeah, you just, you just never know. But, um, so I don't, who knows what's next. Uh, but I do have some really exciting things coming up. A big video game that I, of course, can't <laughs> announce or talk about, but it's a very cool character, and she's almost like a female Joker type of character. And um, that's going to be an exciting one to announce. Um and then I have a big Nickelodeon show coming out. It's called The Loud House, and I play two of the main characters. It's about a boy with uh, ten sisters. So every day, chaos ensues in the house, and it's really funny and well-written, and um, it really pushes a, a few envelopes um, in, in you know, animation, I think. Um, and then I have more Flame Princess coming up, so I'm excited for that. I've been recording some more episodes. Um, so yeah, that's that's exciting. And then, what was the other part of the question? The first. Um. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Oh god. So we talked. Um, so we talked about. So we just talked about uh, what you do next. Um, what has been like? Oh, highlight. Your biggest highlight. Well, um, I think being on a show as big as Adventure Time has been a huge highlight in my career, um, but. You know, I've been working as as a voice actress like for the ten, you know, for many years before then. So I think having something as big as this show, it kind of you know brings a lot of my other characters, you know, to you know to people's attention. So I think that's been a, the best thing for me so far has been that, and hopefully there'll be more big exciting things happening so thank you who knows thank you for your questions um hi i'm becca from League of hi Trade. becca how are you <laughs> um out of all the roles you've voiced is there one that you relate to the most as a person like you see yourself in that character that's a good question um i think um i relate to melina um 
the most. And actually, um, I do you guys know Rooster Teeth? I'm on also on their show X Ray and Vav, and I play um, the reporter Ash, who's like Vav's um, love interest. Um, so she that character I relate to also because she's very ambitious and she's like she's always like you know getting the story and like on point and the, you know there's a, of course like a part of me that that relates to that of course um, um, and then Melina I really liked that character just because she was very real in her responses to Cusco because Cusco's character is kind of a jerk so. <laughs> You know, like, Melina's responses were always very real, and I liked that because I think that's how anybody would respond. And I think that's how people would want to respond to Cusco, but she kind of had that privilege to just be candid with him and just tell say exactly what was on her mind. So that was nice to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, so you voiced um, a lot of characters in games. Do you ever actually go and play those games? <laughs> You know, I do appreciate the gaming world, and I have um, my friend, actually, I'm friends with this guy, Mark Rubin, who is the, uh, he's like the EP of Call of Duty. He's actually retired now, but um, I met him at this, like, dinner event, and I'm like, well, who better to, sh you know, teach me how to play, you know, show me all the video games that are out right now, because, like, I think I, my, <laughs> I stopped at, like, Dr. Mario. <laughs> on like Nintendo but like um but he has showed me he showed me um like ghosts and um just a ton of other games and so I've been um I, I'm really curious to learn more and to play some more um I think obviously Adventure Time has become a pop culture phenomenon all around the world. I'm curious, why do you think the show has been such a sensation and what is it that you love about that series in particular? I love that Adventure Time is written for adults. Um, I think that it respects kids in that it's written for adults knowing that kids will understand it and respond to it and because of that it casts a very wide net because every age can appreciate it and there's humor on so many different levels and I don't know it just really strikes a chord it's just it's a very special combination of of everybody involved like the storyboard artists are handpicked like everybody who's working on that show is um you know, handpicked, and they're like an amazing comic book artist. You know, they have their own, fan, you know, uh, cult following, and then they all come on to Adventure Time, and you know, of course, Penn is brilliant, and um, Kent Osborne, the head writer, he's incredible at what he does, and you know, the voice actors are awesome, like Jeremy and John and Tom and Hinden. I mean, it's just such an amazing combination and like collaboration that it just it's lightning in a bottle. Um, well, just following up on that, um, yeah. obviously, apart from your own, who's your favorite character on the show and why? <laughs> um, I I love the crazy, the, like the creepy characters. Like I think Ricardio is really <laughs> weird and funny, and I also like the one I like uh, Billy. That one just cracks me up, <laughs> and I love to hear all the stories that that you know the rest of the cast and the director like tell about their experiences when these people were, are recording. It's just always so fun to hear. But just all the characters are great, but those two in particular stand out. Oh, and Tree Trunks. Oh, okay, super quick anecdote. So um, so I've never recorded with Tree Trunks, and I don't think she's ever been to Los Angeles to record. She lives in San Antonio. So I was doing, actually, Rooster Teeth, uh, RTX, Rooster Teeth Convention in um, Texas. And um, so I went a day early and the, the convention was in Austin. I went a day early and flew to Antonio. I asked Penn for uh, Tree Trunks info. And I went to her house and I, I met her because I, I just had to meet Tree Trunks. <laughs> and I recorded the whole thing. So I'm going to try to cut together a little, like, a mini video of that adventure. But <laughs> anyway, yeah.